Kanamaran, who was not disturbed at all when the horse suddenly fell down on its own, got up with work in his hands as he got up. His aim was already on the horse, which was approaching the other shore. He was sure that the one riding the bull was undoubtedly Vandiyadeva. Kanamaran's old friendship with Vandiyadeva had now turned into bitter enmity. He felt that Vandiyadeva had betrayed his friendship in many ways. Vandiyathevan is the reason for all the disgrace that happened to him and his family. He has told the secret he learned while staying at his house in many places. He has also told the royal family. Why is it due to devotion to the Chola clan? Not at all. To earn their trust by telling this secret and then betray them too. There is no doubt that he helped the Pandian country in its perils. It is not known whether he committed this double betrayal at Nandini's instigation or for his own gain. It is true that he was trapped in Nandini's magic net for some time. More than all this, Kanamaran was furious with Vandiyadeva for spoiling the heart of his beautiful sister Manamekalai. Wasn't Kanthamaran a deadly deceiver who made the innocent woman cry I killed Kari Kalar because he wanted to make Manamekalai sit on the imperial throne with a crown and crown? Will he let him who has done such great harm flee for his life? Is that what you are looking at? Not a day. It would be good if we could capture Vandiyathevan alive. If possible, we should at least return from here with the consolation that we have killed him and lost him. It was with this decision that Kanamaran left for that human hunt. Now his horse has unexpectedly stopped and fallen. It is rare to survive any more. The horse of the doctor's son Pinyagapani had the same fate. Vandiyathevano has approached the bank of the river. It will take some time for the players who came behind to get there. Even if they come, crossing the flood and going to Akara, it is impossible to catch Vandiyadeva. So killing him is the only thing to do. All these thoughts appeared and disappeared in Kanamaran's mind in a few moments. So, standing up from the floor, he planted his feet well, raised the work in hand, took aim, and threw it away. Vel went with a sound of veer and just as he opened his eyes, Madhurandhagen pounced on him. Screaming wheel, Madhurandhagen fell into the water. The horse only stumbled and tried to climb the bank. Seeing all the above happenings that happened in a very short time from the tree branch, Thukuruman was trembling in his heart and body. He never expected that this could happen. He had thought that those who were caught under the horses that came suddenly and suddenly stopped them would wake up with broken limbs even if they escaped alive. Everything happened unexpectedly. One of those who had fallen stood up and threw a veal, which also missed Madhurandhagen's mark and plunged him into the flood. Surviving the first shock at this, he sprang down with a cry of terror. When the giant struck Gandamaran with the force of his rage and pushed him down and went beyond, the son of Vidya who was stumbling to his feet tried to stop him. By this time, Pinyagapani had lost his fear of the devil and had come to know that the person on top of the tree was Chukaruman. With all the anger that was raging in his heart, Sataruman stabbed Pinyagapani with a small knife in his hand and threw him down and ran towards the bridge. Soldiers on horses behind Gondhamaran and Pinyagapani saw a man running across the bamboo bridge. They halted the horses there, having somehow guessed what had happened before their arrival. Catch! Catch! Catch the one running over the bridge. He shouted. The four leapt from their horses and ran across the bridge, following Karuthraman, who had gone ahead. Kanamaran, who was incapacitated for a while due to the shock of being pushed for the second time and fell head down, quickly managed to get up again and ran behind the four soldiers. The doctor's son, who had been stabbed and badly wounded by the knife, got up in a rage and followed them on the bridge. But before he could take five or six steps, his vitality was gone. Eyes darkened. The head is spinning. Unable to sit up and stand, he staggered and fell into the river. None of the passers-by noticed that he fell like that. Alas, Pinyagapani, the physician's son, who was doing so many spiritual feats, ended his life without getting any of his desires fulfilled. All the sky castles he built disappeared under the north wind flood. The huge flow of the river became the burial pit for his body. After attacking Kanamaran and stabbing the doctor's son with a knife, 
Thirayraman rushed to the bamboo bridge, and when he had passed three quarters of the distance on the bridge, he stopped for a moment and looked back. Just then he noticed that the men on horses had jumped down and reached the end of the bridge. Then he did a strange thing. Where he stood there were bamboo trenches tied together and propped up at the bottom. With the same knife that stabbed Binagapani, he cut the bandages to pieces. He kicked and pushed away the trenches that were propped up with his feet and rushed up. On reaching a carré, there too he cut the ropes tied together with the roots of the bamboo. Immediately he lifted the end of the bridge and threw it away with the flood of the river. The next moment about a third of the bamboo culvert broke away and began to float away with the river. Those who ran to the top of the bridge did not notice that the bridge was stuck there and ran up and down and fell into the flood one by one. Only Kanamaran, who was the last of them all, escaped falling into the river. After drowning and drowning, those caught in the flood stuck their heads outside. Kanamaran saw them and shouted orders to swim to the shore and land. Two of them came to know it and swam towards the shore. The other two, with great exertions, swam opposite and got hold of the remaining bridge and climbed over it. Kanamaran scolded them well first. But he felt it was useless to ask them to swim again. So, he plucked some more bamboo poles from the bridge and made them build like a raft. After floating it in the flood, the other two men grabbed hold of it and reached the shore. Just before that, they met the other two soldiers who had joined Akar. They said that shortly before they landed, the man from Akar had disappeared into the darkness, and that they had heard the footsteps of two horses. They also said that it was no use following the horses on foot and that they had stopped. But Kanamaran did not want to stop like that. The doctor's son said that the lunatic in the prison must be the one who jumped from the tree and threw himself off and ran over the bridge. In order to escape Vandiyadeva he had to tie a rope across the road and climb a tree and wait. There is no doubt that Vandiyadeva is the victim of his work. He saw with his own eyes that his horse fell headlong into the flood. But if he finds his dead body and sees it, his soul will be more satisfied. Maybe Vandiyathevan will take the body to Tanjavur. Isn't it possible to achieve the glory of killing a person who committed great betrayal to the Chola clan? Through that, the dishonor of the Sambhavariyar clan can be removed to some extent. The fact that Vandiyathevan tried to run away alone is sufficient reason to prove his guilt. If it is certain that Vandiyadeva was the one who killed Aditha Kari Kalar, shouldn't the Sambhavariyar clan have to bear the terrible blame? Thinking like this, Kanamaran went down along Vadavatangarai. The four soldiers followed him. They kept on looking to see if the body of Vandiyadeva was lying somewhere on the shore. This is not so easy in the dark of night. However, Kanamaran did not give up hope and went higher and higher. After going a long way, the sound of Periyadar waterfall falling from the mountain was heard. When we got closer to the place where the sound had come from, we saw that there was a mess built across the river. The water stagnated at that place, then fell into the ditch at high speed and was swept around by the wave. If Vandiyadeva's body had reached that far, it would have fallen into the great pit and drowned. It will take several days to come out again. It may disappear without appearing. So there is no point in searching further. While Kanthamaran was thinking like this, he saw something black falling with the current which was pouring white foam over the turbulent river. Aha! That should be the body of Vandiyadeva. A great traitor has left this earth. May God forgive his sins. But is that possible? Can even the Lord forgive his sins? Can not. Can not. Shouldn't he enjoy their benefits in his next birth? Let it go anyway, Vandiyadeva's life in this world is over. Now, we don't have to worry about him. Let's go back to Tanjore and take care of other things. Thus Gandamaran decided and returned the way he had come. Aha! How much disappointment awaited him in Tanjore! How will Kanamaran be startled when he learns that the one who killed him by throwing a veal and caused him to fall into the river was not Vandiyadeva, but Prince Madhurandha? Is it not surprising that the earth seemed to split under his feet?